Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. Um, so today I wanted to talk about uh, my investment portfolio and update you on um, some changes I've made. Um, and really it's been quite a turbulent time in the markets. You know, it's been, you know, you could describe it as a, a market crash, but really it's probably just a, a quite a strong correction. Um, so what's my strategy during these, these times? Um, you know, obviously we had a very similar scenario but to a greater extent um, around this time last year when the you know the uh, the virus pandemic started and there was really a, a proper crash in the market you know we've we've seen similar elements um, this year round as as well and you know so what have I been doing how have I been reacting to that um, and what changes have I made with my investment portfolio um, to to really uh, combat the the drops in in the market so uh, let's jump in and let's have a look okay here we go and so this is the the front screen of my investment portfolio in so i'm in the uk and we use something called a stocks and shares isa um it's it's like a, a tax-free way of in, investing into stocks and shares in the uk so if you're not in the uk just ignore it it's just it's just like a a normal brokerage investment account that where you can buy stocks and shares. So jumping in, um, you would have seen some other companies that I was invested in. You know, I'll try and put a screenshot up on on here, and you'll see that see that I had uh, quite a sizable for for me at least quite a sizable investment in Square. Um, you know, that investment had gone very very well for myself. Um, you know, you can check back in my older videos to see that I bought Square really when the um, the virus pandemic started and the market started to crash. You know, I really saw it as an opportunity to get into Square very, very cheaply. You know, I was very bullish on them as a company, but I just um, I thought I'd missed, you know, the the best opportunity to buy them. Anyway, the the market crash happened and I, I could start buying Square at forty dollars and fifty dollars and sixty dollars. Um, and, you know, within a year, you know, they'd, they'd really posted some extraordinary numbers in terms of revenue growth um, and in terms of, uh, you know, really smart moves in, in buying some Bitcoin as well. And um, so that transformed them into from a $40 uh, company to a $280 company within a year. So, you know, great result. 5x my, my investments. Um, but you know, I I was monitoring them very closely, and I I wasn't hundred percent. Well, I wasn't really sure how their their growth would um, would develop over time. Um, so let's have a quick look at um, a screenshot of their revenue growth, and you can really see it's plat plateaued really in in the last quarter um, results that they shared um, after an unbelievable um, level of growth prior to that. So. For me, they're just a company that, um, you know, I, I really like them as a company, but I I just couldn't see myself investing them in really, really long term. Um, so I decided to um, sell all of my, my Square stock. Um, you know, they dropped slightly from that high of $280 down to about $245. I sold out at $245. Um, really, I sold out on the very first day after their um earnings call and uh you know they've had a bit of a rocky time since then but it it's partly due to the slowdown in their revenue growth but but also because of the um, volatility in the market recently and you know they've dropped down to uh, between 200 to to 220 dollars uh, very recently and um, so i sold out and i i moved all of that um gain that i made on square moved it into tesla so Tesla now you can see that I'm up to 17 shares. Um, value is just under 8,000. So I bought um, five shares with my proceeds of selling Square. Um, I paid just under $700 for those five. Um, and you can still see here my gain um, overall in Tesla is just over $4,000, which um, is 123%. Um, you know, that 123% growth is very misleading because I first invested in Tesla when they were around $180 in 2018. Um, 
you know, well before the stock splits and well before the huge gains that we've made. And, you know, I'm 1,400% up on those those first shares that I bought in Tesla. So, you know, it's still, still a great result, 123%. Very happy with that. If every investment went that way, then, you know, we'd be laughing. But, um, you know, a, a significant proportion of my gains in, in, in Tesla are as a result of that very early investment in them in, in 2018. You know, hindsight is a wonderful thing. Why did I only buy two shares of them back then? I have no idea, you know, but easy to look back and uh, but important not to regret any decisions you made back then and just be happy that I made a good decision to buy two. And, um, you know, so I'm, I'm up to 17 shares in Tesla and really... The, the point I'm making is that I <clears throat> moved my investment of or in Square away from Square and moved it into Tesla. Um, so these funds I've been in for a while, the Fundsmith, the Linsell Train and the Morgan Stanley I've been in for, for a while. Um, and I've explained why I invest in them. Um, it's really just to protect and diversify away from my up my main strategy of investing a high percentage into one or two um high growth um tech companies usually biotech companies or or fintech in square's case but my main strategy is to find companies that i have a high level of confidence in and and focus a lot of my investment into into one or two companies and then to protect against that i will um, invest in mutual funds or um, you know previously I've done ETFs or something like that but um, you know for for an, a couple of years now I've, I've just used these mutual funds as a way to diversify um, my overall portfolio um, so these are performing okay you know 12 percent 10 percent 13 percent you know no, nothing to be too excited about but you know they're they're just a good way to park some money uh wait and wait for the right opportunity and you know and, and they still make um some games to to keep us interested um and then bio nanogenomics um this is a a new investment for me and you know i've made some videos on them recently so if you haven't seen them go check them out if you have then you'll know all about this company um you know i've added to them again and they're up to 474 shares you know we're waiting patiently for the um, earnings report which is due next week and we will see but you know my expectation is um you know i did a long video on what their results are going to be for that quarter and i wouldn't really expect any any difference from that and i wouldn't really expect any movement on their stock price either they're not going to announce suddenly 10 million 50 million dollar revenue you know they they they're on the trajectory that they're on you know their their guidance will you know it will be accurate um and their stock price isn't really going to change on the back of an earnings call um so this is really a a, a long term approach um i do think there is um i do think they're on um a path to success they have a really great product and you know there's there's a lot to be excited about and a lot to look forward to for bio nano it's just not going to happen all in one earnings call so don't expect too much i i wouldn't even be surprised if it if they dropped you know maybe they announce um i don't know 4.2 million dollars revenue which is pretty much the higher end of their guidance say they announce that and that's it that you know they they may drop to five dollars six dollars seven dollars um if they do be great be another buying opportunity and you know i would i would definitely buy but you know we're, we're not going to see a revolution just from their earnings call so don't expect too much that's that's the point i'm trying trying to make um you know this is a, a minimum a three-year play um you know we we can imagine that perhaps um quarterly revenues would ramp to 20 30 million dollars um within three years um, which would probably get them to say a twenty twenty five dollar price range, maybe even forty um if we if we're really lucky um and we won't really see that exponential growth in in revenue for a for a number of years, but that's okay i'm patient we're patient um 
Having said that, you never know with a the market. They they might get ahead of the the company themselves, and and we see that quite often with tech and biotech stocks that the the stock price is a number of years ahead of what the actual underlying business is doing. So, you know, perhaps they will surprise us and and jump. You know, perhaps up to fifteen dollars again or twenty. So, you know, we will see. Um, and I think what I would like to do also at some point, um you know, some point very, very soon is to to really map out the exit strategy of what we want to do um, and at what point we want to sell out of BioNano. Um, you know, is that going to be in six months, one year, three years, five years, 10 years? Um, or what stock price is our ultimate target? What's our um, target price for, for BioNano? And, and what point do we go, that's enough, I want to sell, and make my gains and move it all to Tesla again, like I normally do. Um, so yeah, that look out for that video. I'd like to do that in the next few weeks. So I think that would be an interesting topic. So, you know, just to get those thought processes going of, of when to sell out. And then at the top of my portfolio, a new addition. Um, I've invested in two funds there um, with Bailey Gifford, Bailey Gifford American Fund, um, One's Class B accumulation, one is Class A inclusive um, accumulation. They're effectively the same thing, um, very similar mix of companies, but they're just they're just um, separate mutual funds under the same umbrella. Um, so I've invested six thousand into this top one, the Class B, five thousand into the Class A, and why did I do that? Um, it was really driven. It, actually, before I answer that, let's just go and look at the the fact sheet for this fund because that would um, demonstrate the mix of companies that are in this fund. Um, so they, you know, I don't want to show you the whole list because there's a long list of of stocks that this fund is invested in, but really just focusing on on the top ten. Um, so why did I buy into Bailey Gifford uh, American Fund? Really, because they are really focused on on tech stocks, and you know this this crash has really been um, impacting these types of of tech stocks or biotech stocks, or um, the I guess the the market describes them as just growth stocks, um, and there really f has been a lot of press around the shift from growth stocks to value stocks um, in in the investing world, and you know I don't really subscribe to investing in uh, value stocks you know i think buying companies based on their whether they're uh, below a, an analytic like a, like a pe ratio or, or price to book ratio or something like that is to me is not a good strategy um especially you know at my level and um in my position as a a sole individual um you know i'm not an investment firm and i'm just investing for my own p purposes you know value investing has no real appeal and and doesn't and, and wouldn't really wouldn't really increase my my wealth or my investment portfolio enough to interest me um so that's why i i really just avoid that type of strategy and value investing strategy i really focus on growth strategies and invest in these types of companies that have the ability to grow rapidly um, you know, and dominate their market se market sectors and, you know, or have a great product that will, um, you know, exponentially grow and therefore grow the underlying stock value. So, you know, the crash this year, very recent crash has really been, uh, has really impacted a lot of these types of companies. Um, so I think, you know, it's a great time to buy them because they've been hit badly. But, you know, you look at these companies, I'm I, I think they they all offer something, um, you know, that really strong. They a lot of them have really great products. You think like Shopify, you think Netflix, Twilio, Roku as well. Roku has had a, a really an unbelievably successful twenty twenty, um, and and Zoom as well. And I think you know these these companies have great products, have a great future, but they're just being hit by um, the market dipping. You know they're. Nothing has changed in these companies. You know, their product hasn't changed. Their revenues continue. They continue to research and in, and develop new products and, and gain market share. Um, they, they continue to be innovative. They continue to disrupt their market sectors. Um, 
So I just think any opportunity to buy them where their price has dipped recently, but their company or their their business hasn't changed is, is a great way forward. You know, that's why I bought Bailey Gifford. Um, same goes for this one. Oops, sorry, I clicked on the wrong thing. So let's just have a quick look at this um, fact sheet. And you can see the mix of, of companies is virtually the same. Um, the other interesting thing is that they're obviously invested in, in Tesla, 4%. That was um, actually much higher when I bought them. When I, so when, not when I bought Tesla, when I invested into this um, mutual fund. So Tesla holding was around 8%. Um, so the, the, the good thing with investing into mutual funds that um, are investing in these types of growth companies is they're they're also actively managed you know they 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 have the ability to trade out of positions and trade around positions so that the 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 drop in the market and you know the overall market has less effect on the the overall price of the mutual fund so what do i mean by that so you know this a, a mutual fund is traded based on on their price which is um broken down um by broken down into all the individual companies that they buy in the background and you buy that mutual fund at a set price and if all of those companies go up or down your the value of your price that you bought the mutual fund at changes up and down but it isn't an ETF it isn't just tracking the market so if the market goes up your value of your mutual fund goes up they're able to trade in and out of those positions to minimize those changes of going up or down um, and, and Bailey Gifford have clearly done that. They've sold a lot of Tesla because they could see the the potential for the Tesla price to go down. Um, you know, they were up in the high 800s, $900 range and dropped all the way to, you know, well, 650 today, you know, but have been hovering around the $700 range. Um, so Bailey Gifford took the view that they want to trade out of those positions and and bank those gains from um, you know, their long-term positions in Tesla um, and minimize this this drop. Um, but having said that, you know, they, they are still down at, from when I uh, bought into them. I bought into them slightly too early, but, you know, I have no concerns in that. It's it's really, um, you know, it's a, it's a long-term play. So, and like I said, those companies that um, are in that mutual fund, I have full confidence in the, in their future, in their long term future. You know, I I expect to get a, a sizable return from from these um, from these mutual funds. And then you know, returning to Tesla. So really, why why am I beginning to focus a lot of my portfolio on on Tesla? Really, as as time has gone on, I've become even more confident in the future of, of Tesla. Um, so actually, what I just wanted to do was just calculate what percentage that Tesla makes up of my total portfolio. So they are, let's just call them 8,000 total. You know, you can see here. So you can see here, you know, they're just under 8,000 pounds. And um, let's just call it 8,000. And my total value of the portfolio is uh, 32,630. So let's just call that 32,000 just to make the maths a little bit easier and cleaner. So, you know, there you go. It's 25% of my portfolio is in Tesla. Um, am I concerned about that? No, definitely not. In in high conviction stocks and high and companies that you have a higher confidence level in, you know, you need to move a higher percentage of your investment portfolio into them. You need to, you know, not to the point where you're crippling yourself or you're just, your risk level is huge. You know, you don't want to have 100%, you know, maybe you do, but personally, I wouldn't have 100% all in Tesla or all in one company, even if they're high conviction. Um, but you need a, a large enough percentage that is going to make a difference to your growth and, and your overall performance of your portfolio. Um, and as time has gone on, I've become even more confident in the, the future of Tesla. Um, you know, if you if you extrapolate some of the data that they were sharing at um, the Tesla Battery Day last year, um, and there was a huge build up and a huge anti anticipation before Tesla Battery Day, and everyone watched it, and the reports afterward was like, meh, you know, oh, they're making some batteries, I don't, whatever, you know, everyone was expecting some, I don't know, like amazing micro battery that has 
10,000 mile range or something ridiculous. Everyone was expecting a revolution. Um, but I don't think they really understood or really looked at the details of some of the stuff that they were sharing at um, the battery day. And, and some of the numbers that they were sharing, if you extrapolate out, um, you know, if you extrapolate out to the year 2030, they're forecasting that they're going to be manufacturing and shipping and selling somewhere in the region of 12 to 15 million cars per year. You know, that that makes them somewhere in the region of, you know, worst case scenario, depending on um, margin, probably, uh, you know, they're a, they're a trillion dollar company minimum. You know, they, they could mess everything up from now on until 2030. They would sell enough cars to be a trillion dollar company. Um, you know, probably best best case scenario is that they, they could get to a three trillion, four trillion dollar company um, by 2030 or slightly after then. If if they hit these numbers that they were sharing in best and the battery day, you know, they're going to be shipping up to 14 million dollar, 14 million cars a year. Um, so, yeah, there's a huge potential. You know, they're at seven hundred dollars at the moment. Um, and they've been 800, 900, you know, worst case scenario, the, the Tesla stock price will be 1,600, maybe 2,000, you know, and all they do, all they do is just execute manufacturing cars. You know, we're not even considering the, the potential for um, robo taxis, FSD for self-driving or um, solar and, and energy and, and, you know, really revolutionizing the way that, um, energy is stored in a car that's connected to your house and, and selling energy back to the grid or any of these factors, none of those come into play in the numbers of selling 40 million cars and becoming a $2,000 stock. You know, all they need to do is sell cars to do that. If, if they execute on any of the other things, they could be a four thousand, eight thousand, sixteen thousand dollar stock. So there's huge amounts of potential for Tesla, and I'm, and I'm becoming more and more confident in the aspect that they're just going to sell cars. You know, they to me they've got that down. They've you know they've got um, the gigafactories in the U.S. They've got China. They've got Berlin. You know, there there will be more, and they're going to manufacture a huge number of cars and sell a huge number of cars. Um, but then, you know, I've been saying for a long time, they're not just a car company. They they have the potential to be a lot, lot more than that. Um, you know, I'm very, very confident in buying Tesla at $700 or, you know, $650 they are today um, or even $1,000. You know, when it, whenever my portfolio becomes, you know, inflated in certain areas like it did with Square, I'm very happy to trade out of them and move all of that into Tesla. Um, and, and Tesla really is going to be like a, a, a storage for um, my investment portfolio for the next 10 or 15 years, really. Um, so, yeah, that, that's why I, I changed my current companies that I'm invested in and, and moved it even more focused on Tesla and why I'm happy to buy mutual funds like Bailey Gifford that is also heavily invested in, in Tesla. So thanks for watching again, as always. I really appreciate you hanging around to the end and I uh, hope you found that useful or, or interesting. You know, my aim is just to share what I'm doing and my opinion and my strategy. Um, and if that helps you out, then great. You know, that that's what this, this channel is all about. Um, just sharing knowledge and sharing ideas and getting an insight into to what other people are doing and what I'm doing. So I hope you found it useful. Thanks again for watching. You know, help me out, hit the like button, subscribe and, and comment below and do all the YouTube things as always. And I will see you all very, very soon. Take care. Bye.